Hey everybody, John Peterson here along with Jack Graham. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing as good as my background. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's very hypnotic. Very hypnotic. Well, hey folks, we're here to uh, give you a little overview of the Palouse photo workshop that we just got back from. We did it last week, had a great group and a great time, and we wanted to uh, get on video and talk to you guys a little bit about the experience. And uh, what did you think, Jack? Well, you know, I guess, uh, John, let's be honest. I guess this is, uh, you know, it's going to sound like a, a selfish um, commercial for next year's event and your event that I'm going to try to make in August. But the reality is, um, and, and there's a few places I say this about, the Bears in Alaska, um, Iceland, um, a couple other places. It, whether, whether whoever's watching this, if, if you've not been there, whether you go with us or somebody else, we, we want you to go with us, uh, honestly. But as a photographer, or, or even just a you know a, a tourist, a sightseer, man, it's man, it's it's, it's kind of like the Tuscany of America. You know, it's one of these places that it's got to be a bucket list. It's something. It's just an amazing thing to see. It is. It, it really is. And, you know, this is this was your, what, 28th year, 29th year up there. And it was my, I think, 12th year, 10th or 12th year, one of the two. Um, I've kind of lost really count. And so yeah. we've been going there an awful lot. And we keep going back because it is such a special location. You know, you don't know much up there. It doesn't change. I mean, I have to tell you, Oaksdale, Garfield, um, Endicott, these towns, uh, they're no different than when, uh, you know, in, in Oaksdale, the grocery store still puts their sale items on the paper that you wrap meat in, you know, and they put them in the window with magic marker. I mean, it's happened 20 years ago and it happened this year. So, yeah, always, always. That's one of the reasons this is so cool. Yeah, it is. You know, and, and this year, the, the harvest was a little late. It's about a month late, or the planting, the wheat. All the crops are a little late thanks to the weather and we had you know normally this time of year the first week in june it's uh 85 90 degrees and we had uh 65 to 70 in clouds and a couple of days of rain and it was different june 9th if i turn this computer around and show that outside the window here it's pouring rain yeah this is june yeah, it was very different conditions, which, you know, as, as workshop leaders, normally, like in sunny conditions, we have all these great locations. But uh, when it's wet, there's there's a few places that we can't get to because of the mud. You know, the the uh, the roads, the dirt roads get so slippery. This dirt is so fine. It gets so slippery that we didn't want to take a workshop out there. So, you know, using our experience, we we found a whole bunch of other locations and uh and yeah, we, 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 had, we had somebody go off at the end of the workshop after we were done. Somebody went off and uh, yeah. went on the, the dirt roads and got stuck. And we told everybody, yeah. stay on paved or gravel roads. Don't, if you yeah. see me, like, run. Yeah. Yep, yep. So we, uh, you know, this, this Jack, I, we've talked, we talked about this and I've shared the story before, you know, people ask us where the, uh, Kind of some of the hardest places to photograph and and the the whole rainforest in washington of course is the is the hardest for me but the palouse along with death valley is uh can be a very difficult place if you're not into or seen creatively and it's about light and shadow and shape and texture and there's no like really very few icons right you know, you know other than photographing barns it's it, some of the most magical photographs are really uh, just about the light and the shadow across the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And we had interesting light this year. You know, we have it every year, but um, it's different. And having been there so many times, um, you know, I've got on my GPS, 
I think I show seven or eight locations per screen. And I went back and looked. I, I've got nine screens just of the yeah. pool over the years. And each year we keep finding more too, because it, there's so many roads to take. And uh you know, we we get there early um and usually stay <clears throat> another half a morning, you know, on the way home. And you know, it's always been my goal to find something new for the group. Uh, yeah, each year, following year, and 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 you know, we did it this year. We'll show you some of the stuff, but um, it's just a it's a, it's a, it's just it's a fun place. Um, it can be a little tiring because sunrises are <laughs> sunsets are late. Yeah, I think our first morning we were awake at. 2:45 for a 3:30 a.m. departure, and but uh, got rained out. I really want to tell everybody is that again we want you to come with us. But if you do go with anybody else, make sure that you are in a group with no more than five attendees per instructor, because this place requires a lot of guidance yep you know and and that's why you know we're here and the other instructors are here um I, i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen i want you to see this picture everyone <laughs> if i can do this right john 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 is the vice president of technology here for of course for for uh look at this everybody That is half of one workshop that was up on Steptoe Butte, half. And, you know, I mean, there's a probably $30,000 worth of tripods, probably, I don't even want to guess how, you know, but nobody's getting any help. They're just standing there looking out. I, looking I, away. I, and, I, and if you haven't shot this location, it's... Uh... <clears throat> sometimes you don't know what to shoot. And so you need some instruction and some help to point you in the right direction and kind of spark that creative, uh, that creative inspiration for shooting up, up and in step to right at the right time. Yeah. Remember, yeah. We, I mean, the light, the shadows are over and up the road comes a group. Right. Yeah. After the good light. They missed it. Yeah. Well, Jack, why don't we why don't we show a few? I know you've got a few images and I've got a few images to share from this year. So why don't you uh, why don't you start us off? Your, yeah, your stuff's better than me. So I'm, I'm just going to oh. I'll go first because people remember what they <clears> see. <throat> um, let me go full. Well, I have to share a screen first. Yeah. Technology. This is why Peterson is the, the whiz <laughs> and, and I'm the. I'm the. Uh, You're the Ed McMahon. It, in a prior life, so I'm going to hit share screen and hit share, and that ought to work. Yep. Yep. Looking good. It doesn't look good. It looks blurry. Why is it blurry? Don't is know. It? Hmm. Well, John, I have no idea. So why don't you go first? All right. All right, know. we'll see if uh, I can get some better results off of this. It looked good when we were practicing. Oh well. So before the workshop, I don't I don't fly my drone during the workshop because I'm there to help help people. Um, but before the workshop, Jack and I went out flying, and uh, this was a, a shot uh, from uh, the very famous kind of split tree or double tree that we shoot from Steptoe Butte. We went down to that location and flew around and. You know, one of the things when getting an aerial uh, perspective on the, on the landscape is great. And uh, you can do all sorts of geometric alignments of, of uh, wheat fields and plowed fields. And it was just, it was a really nice night out for flying. I flew around, uh, we call this Dave's Junk, but I think it's an old schoolhouse. Uh, I was able to fly around that. And, uh, you know, every year we, we go out to the owner and we bring him a six pack of beer. So he tolerates us uh, being around his property. And again, the, you know, this, this building has just maybe a couple of years left and uh, each year it gets more crooked and crooked and crooked. And 
but this was kind of fun from a drone's perspective. We normally shoot it from from low down, down on the road, and uh, we were able to to get up a little bit higher. So that was kind of cool. One of the things that's fun out there is to to shoot panoramas, and this was a eight shot panorama that I stitched together, and uh, it's just it's about the shape and it's about the light, it's about the simplicity of the landscape, and so panoramas work really well up in the Palouse. Again, another drone shot. This is uh, the Lado Barn, and this used to be a Pony Express stop apparently, and the seat of government uh, way back when it was sort of in this building. But again, just a different perspective on the landscape. We were out scouting one day and uh, we saw these, we, we had this just amazing sky and the light was just at, the, at a great angle for shooting some, uh, some rolling hills and these two silos that were kind of hiding between the folds of the land. And so this, uh, we pulled over on the side of the road and composed uh, quite a few different shots uh, of these two silos. Again, you know, there's, we see these things a lot out in the Palouse, but if you, you really need the right light. And so some of this is opportunistic photography. We can plan to go someplace, but if the light's not right, then maybe some things aren't as pretty as they would be. These things normally aren't that great, but with a wonderful sky and good light and a nice shadow in the foreground, it really came out to be a wonderful shot. Now the old Erickson barn, we stopped by and photographed that. And uh, this is just beautiful. I think what I've, I've shot this barn before, but what really works is the, the color and the tone in the sky how it matches the barn and then the water in the foreground. So all of those three elements came together to make a, to make a great photograph. And this is probably one of the best photographs I have of this barn. <clears throat> Likewise, Jack, I think you and I were driving back from a, from a scouting trip up sort of Northwest of Colfax and saw this house off in the distance. And so we threw up the drones and went out and photographed it. And all over the place. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, these things are everywhere. It's, it's just a, it's just an amazing area. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, we, again, driving back on a scouting day, we looked in the rearview mirrors and saw these uh, the rain clouds and storm brewing off in the distance. So we pulled over, and I think for me, what really makes this shot is that uh, the bit of light on the roadway, kind of a spotlight, okay. really takes your eye into the image and then off into the distance. You know, we've got some great stuff off that road over the years. I don't know yeah. whether it's just that one turn in that road. It's it just been lucky, I guess. Yep, yep, agreed. This is uh, uh, another, I mean, the red barns are all over the Palouse. This was actually really near Colfax, just uh, a mile and a half away. This was uh, part of our group at uh, sunrise one morning and... Uh, Looking east, there's not a lot of great vantage points looking east, but we have one that uh, really makes for a great sunrise shot. It does. It does. We were fortunate enough, uh, we had one of our folks was an uh, avid birder, and she spotted this owl in the tree. So I managed to go over there and uh, grab a photograph of it. Barn owls, you know, we've seen them in barns, we've seen them in trees, we saw one uh, on a fence post, and... They're kind of all yep. over. There's there was a moose sighting up there too uh, one night up on Steptoe. Was Did he up there? A, yeah, yeah, yep. I didn't. I saw two. Talked to two people that saw it, but I didn't get a get a glimpse of it. And again, it's playing with the sky, and you know, monochrome works extremely well up in the Palouse. And I probably shot fifty percent monochrome and fifty percent color. The, uh, the silos, there's, uh, we, we sometimes go up to this town called Endicott and they have these massive grain silos and the, just the size and the reflectivity of them during the day and how you can get some really bright highlights and really dark shadows. And then the symmetry repeating patterns. I, I personally love shooting these silos every time I visit. This time I happened to capture a, a stairway uh, th that was going up the side of the silos to add a little bit more visual interest to an image like this. 
Yeah, they're great to do when the sun sets. We didn't get that this year, unfortunately. But right, right. You know, the train tracks because they uh, they harvest the grain, they put them in silos, and then they put it on train cars to take them to ports. So there's all these train tracks and old barns running through every small town. So you can always do great shots of these. Um, again, it's about storm clouds and the rolling landscape. We happen to be uh, shooting kind of west uh, near Steptoe Butte, and uh, I included the, the wind farm in this shot. But layers, this is about layers and tones and colors going off into the distance. And every year is different. It's every amazing. year is different. Um, I personally like playing around with a lot of simplicity, you know, really simple shots up there almost abstract in their simplicity. And of course, the last night we were up there, we had some amazing shadows playing across the landscape. And this is the kind of stuff you can do uh, pre-sunset when the, when the sun is kind of low in the horizon, but still high enough to cast some really well-defined shadows. You play with the folds and the highlights across the top of the hills. And this we're is up, kind of I think, John, what are we up around 3,000 feet there? Maybe 2,800? Oh, at the most, yeah, 2,500. You know, looking down, that's shot with a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, probably the equivalent of about six or 800 millimeters, correct? 840 millimeters, yep. Yeah. So, you know, those, we call them folds, but those hills, I think they're probably. 50 to 100 feet tall. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're big when you're down on the ground. They're big. That's and so don't, called. you know, if you ever, folks, if you visit the Palouse, bring a long lens for doing this kind of work. Um, you need you need at least 400 millimeter when you're shooting up on step toe and you want to do the shadows. Then, of course, the, the shot that Jack shared... And then out scouting the last day, um, as I was leaving town, I took a half a day and went scouting, you know, found this little grouping. And again, because we had texture in the sky and some interest in the sky, um, this shot was possible. You know, in a shot like this, a uh, very quintessential Palouse, but a yellow barn, not a red barn. Yeah, there's some different color barns here. There are. So that is, uh, those are just a few of the shots that I collected over the, uh, over the week that I've, I've had time to process. Yeah. Well, time is. Yeah. Let me uh, try to make this work here, John. Are you still sharing or? Nope. It's all you, Jack. Let's see if I can make this work this time. So if I go to Lightroom, um, That's not my car window. That's another car window. Again, what John was saying, um, simplicity. Um, that's the Ladlow barn. Um, prior years, some years we've had crop dusters flying around there. But uh, that's uh, actually shot with a probably at around 150 to 200 millimeters, but it's about four or five stacked images with different focal points. That's why the foreground and the background is really sharp. So I focused at different points and then put them together. And we teach all this stuff when you're all there. Um, it's uh, really important. We had some great clouds one night up at Steptoe. Um, it's just some, some awesome clouds uh, were forming. And of course, in monochrome, same shot. Um, as a as a horizontal tells two different stories. I, I tend to like to uh, photograph things both horizontally and vertically because they do tell two different stories here. And it's uh, it's interesting. There's there's John shot in color, mm -hmm. um, and I did, of course did it in monochrome as well. I, I think the monochrome's smaller. Um, we take a group up to Sprague to Dave's old cars rescue, and we do some. Um, kind of some automobile, old automobile and truck photography. Um, and it's, it's, it's always, a, it's one of those places, John, that when you get there, people are going, why are we here? And when yeah. we have to leave, they go, oh, um, just some great, great color, great stuff. Um, this again was a uh, composite of six or seven images, uh, fo focal points um, here on the wheel, 
Uh, I didn't focus back here because I didn't like that fence to begin with. Probably could take that out, but uh, little little uh, Orton effect or Glamour Glow and mixed software, and you get that old old look. But we teach all of this stuff, and it's really a fun place to go. Um, again, simplicity. I think you'll see a, a lot of duplicates. Uh, John and I scout together, and when we lock in on something. Uh, here, here's a shot from uh, from the Damon Barn up uh, up down to actually south down toward Poland, where we take uh, folks. Uh, a lot of rusted wheels, and again, a lot of abstracts. Here's my bag. If you're looking back at my head here on the screen, that's what I'm using. Just very sim simple things. Um, <laughs> this doesn't show up real well <laughs> on here, but. This uh, was 20 vertical images shot together on a panorama. And that's what it looks like up at Steptoe Butte. It's almost 180 degrees. Yeah, if I were to look this, John, it would be about, a, would be about um, I don't know, 12 feet long and about two feet high. Uh, I don't have anything big enough to ever do that, but it's kind of a unique look at what we look at from up there. And, mm -hmm. You can see, folks, if you've not been there, how, how do you how do you simplify and look at finding the right place to shoot? And we help you do that. So, and here's your here's your crowd again. Um, the, the, on the way home, here, a couple new places we'll be taking folks next year. This is out on a back road that I hadn't been on in years, and I did some just some images. This is just such a peaceful little area here, and. Um, there was nobody on the road. I mean, it was just a, 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 a road off a road off a road. Um, just a lot of stuff to do. Work, work cars. Anyhow, just it, just a real, um, it, it's just an amazing area um, to, to be in, you know. And um, we'll get out of this and we'll hit uh, X. John, I am so lame. Isn't it amazing? It is, Jack. It is. Um, just stop right here. here. That would be the name. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, you'll, folks, you'll yeah. find out when you get to be 150 years old. They'll find out. But at any rate, you know, I, I, again, if you just for those of you who've not been to Palouse, it, it's just it's an amazing area, and you got to go. Yep. John, you can be there in August. I'm going to try to be out there uh, with you. I can't promise it. It's not. This is John's event. Um, but, you know, it's a very different time to be there. John, let me tell everybody a little bit about why it's so different. And it's only 60 days later. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, the color palette is completely different. We're dealing with golds, yellows, and browns instead of greens and yellows. And the, the fields, depending on when the harvest happens, the fields are in either full-blown wheat or they're in stubble, or they're in this really dark brown, almost black earth toned. And so you have a whole different color palette to composite with. And then the, the thing that I love about August, and I'm, I'm building this as a masterclass because it is even more challenging to photograph um, artistically for me, because along with the folds and the rolls of the hills, you have plow lines all of the harvest lines that are going through that. And those are compositional elements that you need to work with in your, in your shots to create these kind of meaningful images. And, uh, and so it just adds another layer of challenge to, to how do you work with the shape of the landscape plus the, the, the lines of the harvest into your photograph. So it's a, uh, it's an amazing, amazing thing. So we're doing that uh, early August. So if you folks are interested, it's up on my website. Take a look, uh, johnpetersonphoto.com. Dude, it's great out there. It's when the farmers are out in the fields, especially late in the day and not so much in the morning because they're it's a late day event, but you know, they're out in their combines and they're, they're, they're bringing up all this dust off, off the ground. Yeah, and sometimes when that sunlight comes through that dust, man, it's just it's just, just orange, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, so we went out chasing combines last year and got a bunch of action shots, and uh, it's a it's a whole different experience than spring, and it's it's honestly turning into one of my favorite times because of 
kind of the uh, the increased challenge and just the, the different uh, different subjects that are even available. You know, there's more trains, combines are out, all sorts of other equipment, and so busy, it's a busy time. Yeah, it's a very busy time. Yep. So think about joining me. It'll yeah. be fun. Yep. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to try to do that. Um, so far, so good. Yeah. Well, hope you can make it out, Jack, for sure. Yes, All right, folks. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and sign off for now. And that's just a you know an overview of our wonderful Palouse 2022 workshop. So, and, and you can find all this information either on John's website or on my website. Yep. John, we'll be back again that uh, next year. Uh, and and on YouTube, don't you have to say like us and all of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like us, subscribe, all that good stuff. So, of course, of course. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed yeah. the events we spent with you. Thank you. Yeah.